Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGeek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is Introduction to QRadar. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Bodhayan Chakrabarti, Security Information and Event Management Specialist at IBM India Software Labs. Vodayan is working as a SIEM Specialist in IBM India Software Labs specializing on security intelligence and compliance. With over five years of hands-on experience on different SOC and SIEM solutions, he has been the author of different white papers, read books and has been conducting trainings and webcasts in this field. He has done many international deployments wherein he had contributed started, starting from the RFP phase to the proof of concept phase to the ultimate deployment and training to the customer. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speakers. Over to you Mr. Bodhayan. Thanks Mohini. I am just wait, just give me a second, I'll start sharing my screen and we can fire up then. Okay, so I guess everyone can uh, see my screen. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Bodhan and today we are going to learn about a new product. Uh, this is a new acquisition by IBM. Uh, the name of the company that was acquired was Q1 Labs and from the Q1 Labs acquisition we got something known as a QRadar SIM solution. Now before jumping into the details of the product or you know how good or how bad this product is, just have some of the quick facts about Curator. Curator is a leader in the Gartner SIM Magic Quadrant for 2008 to 2012, that is the present. And we are 200% sure that in 2013 also we will be at the top in the leader's quadrant. And we are the only SIM solution which has achieved a perfect 5 on 5 score as well as we are an SIM solution that provides network behavior anomaly detection module also. That is, if you talk about other SIM solutions, what you have got is, you know, that SIM solution collecting events from multiple event sources. Event sources can be your switches, routers, firewalls, servers, databases, applications, anything and everything. And all these produce events, audit events or error events or application events. SIM solutions, what they do is they grab those events and try to figure out the security threat level of the organization. Now, Curator is the only SIM solution that also incorporates something known as NBAD. That is, we look at the packets of data that is flowing in the wire. We sniff out the packets of data that is flowing in the network, in your internal network, and together with that, we also look at the events that are being generated by the different event sources, and then we give you the total security posture. Now, how does that help? That helps in the way that we look at pre-exploit as well as post-exploit. Funny terms, so let's just understand. What do you, I mean by pre-exploit? Now, you know, in today's wild, wild web, that's what we tend to call www rather than world wide web we tend to call them as wild wild web you have got lots of bad people sitting around trying to break into your environment trying to compromise your environment now even before they actually start attacking your environment we try to do a prediction and prevention how do we do that we do vulnerability management that means now you've got your vulnerability scanners you do a regular scanning of your environment and you see that, okay, there are three servers which have got vulnerability. That's it. Now, when you put in a curator SIM solution, it manages not only that vulnerability scan result, it, together with that, it adds the net packets of data that are flowing in the network, as well as the events that it is receiving from the different event sources. Totally on the whole, it gives you the security posture. As well as curator accepts or receives X-Force feed. Now, people who don't know what is X-Force, ISIS X-Force is an IBM research lab targeted only at looking at the security, defense security threats that are arising every moment around this world. So, we accept feeds from ISS X-Force as well as 
we connect to something known as an open source vulnerability database that is OSVDB. Now from OSV, now what is this OSVDB? OSVDB is a free you know, database which contains all the known vulnerabilities that are present right now around the world. So we connect to that OSVDB database also. So from multiple such knowledge bases, not only that, we connect, we can connect to ARI and OS project data, uh, ARI and uh, Honeypot databases also to get IP information. Now from all these sources, we try to figure out what are the risks that are present in your environment. Let's say we did a risk analysis, we found out okay, these are the problems, you remitted at those. Still, let's say there's an exploit. Now, post-exploit, we are there also because we look at incident response. We look at network and host intrusion prevention. We look at network anomaly detection. What do I mean by network anomaly detection? Simple example. Let's say uh, an XYZ organization. Now, on any given weekend, the amount of outbound traffic, that is the traffic that is flowing from your internal network to the internet, that is your external network, Let's say over the weekend it should be around 200 MB, that's it. Because it's a weekend, that's Saturday and Sunday. Now one fine weekend, you know, one fine weekend, you see that the outbound traffic, rather than being around 200 MB, it went up to 5 GB, 5 GB of outbound data. That would be interesting. That would mean that someone had come into the office on, over the weekend and he had transferred some massive files, I mean massive size files, or massive size data to the external network, which is not good, and that too on a weekend. So in such cases, Curator will help you out, because this will be the guy who will immediately alert you that something bad is going on, as well as not, it, it will not only stop over there, it will also say you what is that person doing, who is that person, which IP address he is sitting at, which is that particular machine at what he is sitting and doing all this bad stuff. Now, this is the difference between any first generation SIM solution and our next generation SIM solution like Curator. In your first generation SIM solution, what you've got is you've got different event sources. Event sources, as I told you, can be your switches, routers, firewalls, databases, SAP applications, anything and everything. Now these all generate events. These events are collected in real time. Some rules are there, rules as in, you know, if any user logs into this Linux machine, then his account should be blocked. Such simple rules are present. And based on that, you know, that first generation SIM solution, it will create some suspected incidents. This is very important. Some suspected incidents. Suspected incidents which have got a very high amount of very high number of false positives. Now, the moment I am looking at a next generation SIM solution like Curator, what we do together with what the first generation SIM solutions could do was we also do asset discovery. We do active vulnerability assessment as well as passive vulnerability assessment. Passive vulnerability assessment is really a nice thing. Without your involvement or you know without you know you you having to configure something, the curator deployment is going to connect to OSVDB and get updated with the latest vulnerability that have been discovered around the world. Active vulnerability assessment is done using your vulnerability scanner. Also, we get the IP location. We've got a service known as MaxFind. From there, we also get the IP location, location of an IP address. And then we do network behavior, real pattern, as well as application behavior and all these. And taking all these into account, we create something known as an offense. Now, what is an offense? Offense, in simple word, is a security incident. Any for any network operation center or a security operation center, a security incident that in Curator we call them as offense. Now, one good thing about Curator is that you don't have individual or siloed environment. It's an all-in-one integrated solution. There are multiple advantages as well as you know one good thing about this integrated solution is that we have got a proper distributed architecture. Let us think about it. I'll, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say. Uh, there's an organization and one of its data center is in Bangalore and the other data center is in Chennai and it is headquartered out of Delhi. Now in this case, think about it in this way. I've got a curator appliance looking at all the events as well as the packets of data that are flowing in the wire 
sitting at the Chennai data center. Another curator appliance sitting at the Bangalore data center which is looking at all the events that are being generated by all the servers, routers, switches, firewalls as well as all the you know as well as all the packets of data that are flowing in that are flowing around within that Bangalore data center. Now all these are locally correlated and they are stored locally. This is the best part. Think about it. If you had to send all those events, you know, terabytes of data in real time to the Delhi headquarter where your central console is present, where your actual knock or your soft people are sitting and looking at it, it would be tough. It would have choked your bandwidth. So what we do is rather than sending all the data to my centralized console, I am going to store my process data locally on that appliance itself. Only for correlation purpose, correlation as in, you know, when I'm talking about global correlation. Global correlation, let's uh, consider an example that will be of better understanding to us. So, let's say my requirement is that if an user Bob, uh, let's say there's a user named as Bob, if he logs into any machine within the Bangalore data center, then an email alert should be sent out. This is an example of a local correlation. That is, the rule checking, this, this is actually a rule. So all the events that are being received, or events as well as the packets of data that are being processed locally in my Bangalore data center. Over there, that data will be checked against this rule. Is the username Bob, and is he logging into any machine whose location, whose physical location is the Bangalore data center? Then an email alert would be sent out. That is, for this thing, for this particular local correlation, that appliance sitting in the Bangalore data center will not have to come back to the Delhi central console. The checking and everything will be done locally over there. Example of a global correlation, let's say my requirement is that if Bob logs in five times across any servers present across both the data centers, then there should be an email alert sent out. It might be that Bob logs into the Chennai data center server three times and the Bangalore data center server two times. So three plus two is five. So in that case, the rule is looking across the deployment, across the two appliances. In that case, we have got something known as a global correlation. Only in those cases will the offense-related information, that is whether the rule has been checked or not, whether the rule is matching or not, that is sent to the centralized console. Other than that, it won't be. So that is a good thing about our distributed architecture that we've got. Now all these, you know, whether I'm talking about a simple log management, log management would mean, you know, I'm just grabbing all the events from my different event sources, storing them, doing some historical searches, and that's it. My log management, my proper SIM solution, wherein I've got that intelligent part, that correlation rules and everything running. My risk management, together with that, my network activity and anomaly detection. That is the end bad part. That is all the packets of data that are flowing in the wire, I will be looking into them also. I will go to layer 7, layer 7 of that packet of data. Using Qflow, there's a concept known as Qflow, which we will be discussing in our next slides. So using that, we actually go to layer 7 and show you, okay, whether this packet of, whether this packet of data, was it part of a file transfer, of a GTOC file transfer, or was it a, Skype, uh, voice chat, I mean, so video chat that was going on. All these you get in a single dashboard. By the way, the screenshot that I pasted in the slide, that's from a real curator box. That's how the dashboard of curator looks like. The good thing about curator is automation. That is the strength of this, uh, of this solution. <clears throat> I'm telling you this from my personal experience of working across multiple assigned solutions. Good thing about curator is it's automated. You know, you just plug the, it's, it's appliance-based, so you put the appliance in your data center, plug it in, that's it. It automatically configures itself. It automatically dis discovers all the event sources. It automatically discovers all the Unix servers, all the, your routers, switches, firewalls, which are sending in events to it. It automatically discovers even those assets which are not sending events to it. How does it do that? Let's say, you know, there is a, and I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say in your organization, you you know employees are not allowed to bring in their own devices due to security reasons, due to policy requirements. Employees cannot bring in their own uh, devices and connect to the corporate network. Devices can be my smartphone, can be my app, uh, app, uh, Apple iPad, 
or some some my some of my tablet or something like that. Now let's say there's an employee who unknowingly or knowingly because he's a bad guy, he brings in his iPad to the organization and connects his iPad to the corporate network. Now in this case, if you've got any other SIM solution, they won't be able to detect that. Because you know what happens is, you know, let's say he authenticates his iPad uh, against your uh, DNS and everything, and your network assigns an IP address to it also, thinking that it's a new box, it's a new proper box that has come up in the environment. It assigns an IP address and he starts connecting to the corporate network. Now, in this case, traditional SIM solutions will fail. But because in QData, we look at the packets of data that is being transferred over the wire, that is flowing across the wire, we will immediately grab hold of it. That no, okay, hold on, this is a new box that has come in, this is a new asset that has come in. And depending on the communication ports, for example, there's a new Windows box that comes up uh, on which there is an Oracle database uh, installed, there are Oracle database uh, enterprise uh, installed over there. We see that, okay, you haven't configured QData to determine that that's a, to inform it that that's a Windows server having an Oracle database, no? You don't have to do that. The simple reason being, what QData is going to do is the QData's NBAT part, what that, which, which looks at the packets of data flowing in the network, what it will do is, it will see that, okay, there's a new IP address, and it is doing a communication on port 1521, that's the Oracle port. Immediately it will determine that, okay, there is an Oracle box, I mean, say Oracle uh, database installed on 